Hello, my name is John Oliver. My website is jslhub.org. You get much more details about my testimony and my life and my ministry there. To tell you about my story, I was born in 1953 in Houston, Texas. My parents were Episcopalians, therefore I was infant baptized. Uh, attended church very regularly for the first many years. Uh, as a child, and from that, thankfully, I learned about the Bible, Bible characters, a little bit about Jesus. Um, my parents had a very difficult marriage. They went to the priest to get counsel. He couldn't help them very much, refer them out to another counselor, an outside secular counselor. They went to that person very often for many years. That person was not a Christian, did had no time for God, Bible, prayer, or anything like that. We went to church less and less often. Um, I was a teenager during the 60s. It was a time of upheaval, sexual revolution, uh, anti-war protests, civil rights, all kinds of craziness. And um, of course, being a teenager, I had hormones that were raging, and I, and, and I knew what my body wanted me to do. Uh, but in my conscience was troubling me. If God exists, then being promiscuous with a bunch of girls is not going to be good in the eyes of God. I just knew that intuitively, instinctively. Um, also, I want to settle a bigger matter about does God exist? What is life about? What's the purpose of life? Those kinds of issues. And it was 13 years old. I really grappled hard with that. And I knew that if my life can have purpose and there's a greater purpose of life, the only one that can know that is God. People clearly don't know it. Uh, so I asked all the people that were my neighbors, classmates, relatives, friends, anybody to prove God to me. Most of them were going to church regularly. None of them had any kind of an, a of an answer that was satisfying at all. They had some platitudes, they had some ideas, they had no scriptures, they had no answered prayer, they had no testimony of salvation, they had no apologetics. Simple apologetics like uh, for every effect there's a cause, and there, so there must be a first cause. Everything's in motion, so it's an unmoved mover. Divine design, you look at nature, there's order, there's design. Uh, so there had to be something, a greater intelligence, uh, intelligent design to bring this to play. Uh, that would have helped me enormously when I was 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 years old, all through high school. I would engage students as much conversation as they would let me. Uh, got nowhere. Numerous denominations, most of them were liberals, liberal Methodists, Catholics, went to, went to Georgia Tech. I went many times to this Baptist, Methodist, and Presbyterian Christian uh, gatherings, many times. Never one time heard the gospel of salvation. Never felt one little bit of a conviction. Never knew what the gospel was. Uh, their best hope was maybe get married a virgin. Maybe. Uh, don't get drunk. I mean, that was their whole, and they have parties, and they had cookies and juice and movies and fun, and, but there's no, there's no spirituality. I had deep questions. They had shallow answers. That happened over and over again. Along came a cult to the school, made a presentation. I went there. They offered me um, Eastern religion, philosophy, uh, yoga, meditation, tarot, astrology. The, the guru, Oscar Chazo, had been all over the world, studied all kinds of religions, made up his own kind of a hodgepodge thing. You can go online now and see it, arica, A-R-I-C-A dot org. Uh, but he tried to answer hard questions the best he could. Um, I was drawn to it. I joined it. I jumped in. I took their intensive training, six weeks, uh, full day, qualified, went to their, to their advanced training in uh, Manhattan because I finished their second level. I could teach the first level people. I was looking for a place that I could become a teacher. I was hitchhiking all around the country. Uh, we had communes all over the country, uh, farms and townhouses and apartments and houses all over. And as I was hitchhiking around, I would call my mother. Now, part of the culture of the cult, but not necessarily what they were teaching, was to do, was to do drugs. We work really hard during the week, and we would party hardy on the weekends. Get drunk, get high, sleep around, have fun, but then get really intense during the week. 
And so I would call my mother on the weekend, and I was really high, and, and, and my voice was slurred. She was very concerned. She asked all of her friends to pray for me. She asked all their, and I kept calling. She kept all of her friends, asked all of her friends to pray for me. She has a peculiar idea, thankfully, that prayers can't cross state boundaries. So as I hitchhiked all around the country, she said, oh, I need to now activate people back again in, in Georgia, or now it's Massachusetts, okay, North Carolina. So I had lots and lots of people all over praying for me. And evidently a bunch of sweet little old ladies that never met me were praying for me. And so God took away the desire for drugs by staying in the cult. Met no Christians, I just didn't want it to get high a bunch, a bunch of times for months. My mind started to clear. I said, we're pretty weird. This is, this is not as cool as I thought it was. I moved back, moved back with my mama and did my cult meditation still because I was trying to find what is spirituality, what is truth. And uh, I asked my mother, do you know a church where they know what they're talking about? Now, my mother's in Houston. She'd been to all the churches of any significance, all of Houston for many years. She said, I know the church. It was a charismatic Episcopal church. Uh, important because I knew Episcopal liturgy, but their charismatics were sincere. In the worship of God, in their praise services, the courses, the anointing of God was present. The presence of God convicted that God exists. It says, okay, I give up. God exists. If God exists, then who is God? What does he want? Let's go. Because that's, that's big time. Because otherwise, my thought was, if God does not exist, then when I die, that's all. The grave's the end of the, end of the game. So I get, and, and after 30 years old, it's all downhill. I mean, I've got to hurry up in my 20s to get as much life in as I could, as much excitement, as much pleasure. Well, if God exists, then something's going to happen after death. And my grandmother died suddenly, so I was going, oh, I could die suddenly. Uh, so then um, I joined that organization. I moved in with them very intensively, 25 hours a day, 7 days a week. Uh, for 18 months, I lived a Christian life among the liberals. They were sincere, genuine, sweet liberals. They tried to live that Acts chapter 2 common purse, but they didn't know the gospel. A few Episcopalians are conservatives, most are liberals. They were sincere, sweet, genuine, dear people. But then the, the elder said, we suggest that you move in your own apartment. He says, okay, whatever you say, elder, I'm submitted. In my apartment, I missed the church music. I, tr I, got, I got my clock radio. I tried to find a Christian music. I heard the gospel. I finally heard J. Vernon McGee teach me the gospel, soteriology. What is Christ? What he did on the cross? And, and the passion of uh, Jerry Falwell and the teaching J. Vernon McGee, I went, uh-oh, they're talking about something I didn't know about. I've been looking for in church, talking to Christians, these guys finally told me. I went, I don't have it. A church was advertised on that. Assembly got church. I went there says, and I went to, forward. He says, you ever publicly confess Christ as your Savior? I shook my head, no. He led me into his prayer. I felt amazingly changed and uh, just, oh, it was incredible for three days. Then uh, the pastor said, you need to be water baptized. I never heard of water, water baptism. I went, got water baptized. Uh, uh, God hooked me up with a Church of Christ, previous Church of Christ man that led me those verses. They're very critical. I, there's only eight or 12 verses, but they're really strong to see what Christ did. I, I understand what happened inside of me, and I really wanted to live for God from then on. Uh, I became zealous for God from then. That was in 1973. This is this is 2008. Uh, been living for God. I've been living for Christ. What, what what I find is that is that cults offer community that I haven't found in the local church, and many won't leave the cults because we don't offer an alternative, loving, caring, supportive community. Uh, they have deep answers. They're wrong. We have the deep answers, but we don't understand them to offer them. And that's why if you go to jslhub.org, you'll find links to lots of apologetic sites. There are plenty of people that that's their whole life is to understand apologetics. They're just, they're just counter -cult. You're good. If you do an outreach, you won't, you won't encounter Mormons, Jehovah's Witness, uh, all kinds of people, and, and, and Muslims. There are still people that that's all they do. I, go to JSL Hub. I can go to those. The other thing that's really, really, really important is child evangelism. Uh, because when I was in a searching stage, I did vaguely recall those verses I got as a child. It's important for children to, to be exposed to Bible stories and to memorize scripture. So there's lots of things on there for child evangelism. Very important. If you want to immune your children as parents and grandparents, emphasize child evangelism and Bible memory. Spurgeon's grandmother paid him a penny for every verse and every hymn he memorized. And she had to discreet that because he learned so much. Spurgeon had that in his soul. That's how he became so, so, so he knew, he lived the word of God. Um, 
I think it's very important is it's understanding the fundamentals of the faith because and the language of the faith because the cults will take a word like born again, like uh, so many words, and, and they twist them. You need to go. That's, you need to know what are, what these words mean, what they say, what is theology, what is doctrine, and you support people that are out there. They're willing to take the heat. Uh, for the gospel. They're willing to go and do street preaching. They're willing to go and talk to these people. They're going to spit on them and curse them because we're, we together are a team. We are the body of Christ. We are the church. The, your pastor's not the church. The denomination's not the church. We are the body of Christ. We need to be representing Christ honestly and earnestly and sincerely and genuinely and powerfully and not be ashamed of the gospel. It takes prayer. It takes money. M-O-N-E-Y. That's what you don't spend on something else. Is going to, you need to put your treasures in heaven by putting into the kingdom of God, any anything that, that represents Jesus Christ and the Word of God and the power of God, put some of your money there, lay up your treasures in heaven, because these people didn't and, and, and do child do a evangelism train in your church. Teach your people, because people like me are seeking people of your members. And people don't know how to share the faith. Uh, evangelism explosion, uh, evangel, uh, there's lots of them out there that will teach your people how to share their faith. That's what you need to do. You need to understand the faith. Now, don't understand the cults. Understand the faith. And you can see how the cults take that and twist it. JSLHub.org. I'm John Oliver. Thank you very much.